indeed, this is a subject which many of us probably are not too sure what it means, and especially so for SMEs. First and foremost is the definition of sustainability. Because I think the biggest challenge that oftentimes we find is that we are not sure what it means. Well, put it very simply, it is that doing of business, which you are doing good and that good becomes good business. In short, saying doing good is good business. And the question is then, what is this good that you are doing? And this good will be in two, three perspectives. And this then forms the definition or the parallels that you've got as far as sustainability goes. The first one is about environmental sustainability, which I think is what we focus a lot on. You know, talking about green product, talking about environment, talking about how can we care, you know, and especially for the future generations. And environment sustainability is one big component of the broader subject of sustainability. The second component, you know, and also very interesting component is what we call social sustainability. This is about people. It may be your customers and how you handle your customers as human beings, but it also could be, you know, how you deal with your employees. How do you deal with other stakeholders? And because of those facets, then it becomes you know, the people component of sustainability and what we call social sustainability. And finally, you know, is what we all know and what we've been championing on. And I think it's what, you know, Regina was talking about there is the economic perspective of sustainability. This is why we are talking about the profitability. This is why we are talking about cash flows. This is why we are talking about the taxes that we are paying to governments. And because those taxes causes development. So in a nutshell, sustainability therefore becomes, you know, a three-legged stool, which we must make sure that all time that this tool is balanced. So from that definition, you know, we can then be able to look inwards into our businesses and see what are the sustainable things we are doing. And I can tell you, even without knowing very much about your businesses, is that there is a lot of sustainability that we are doing already. It's only that probably we are not aware about it. Is probably that we haven't been very deliberate about it. And it's also because, you know, we are very uncertain what benefits and what opportunities and what risks does it present to us. And this is the purpose for this session. It's about looking at the opportunities I think we had that KCB is focusing. And I must say, you must be very fortunate, you know, being backed up by a bank which truly, truly believes in sustainability. It is one of the leaders in the continent when it comes to sustainability. And, you know, I think Regina was very moderate there. Kenya or KCB is looking at, you know, 25% of its portfolio being green portfolio. Now, that by itself presents quite a bit of opportunities for us. And I think it will be key that we keenly, you know, and going forward, try to define what is it that can open doors for us to be able to access not only money from KCB, but money from el el elsewhere, which then will be able to back our sustainability initiative. And it's not just about money, which then raises my second perspective in this conversation, which is about why should we care or why should we do it? And of course, there is real benefits, you know, and we will get into the detail of that. But just to give you a summary, you know, and I think this is the most important part of this conversation is about the revenues that you can be able to build into your business. Remember, at the start, I talked about it's doing good, which is good business. And the question is, what is this good we are doing? And we define it as environmental, social and economic issues. But then why should we do it? There are five good benefits, starting with the revenues. We can actually be able to ramp up our revenues within our organization, within our businesses. And here I'm talking about SMEs. I'm not even talking about the large organization. I'm talking about SMEs and the benefits you can be able to get is about the revenues, is about the cost management and reduction of costs. And basically, if you increase your revenues, you reduce your cost. What it means is that, you know, you become more valuable, you become more profitable. Of course, it's also about the third 
you know, reason is risk management. The fourth reason is about reputation and building a reputable business, which is seen as a responsible business because customers, and we'll see it, are becoming more eager and eager to deal with responsible companies. And finally, it is about that social license to operate that sustainability provides you with. And the moment we understand these five facets and we connect them with what and how, which is part of this discussion, eventually then you'll get to that point where you will care about future generations, but not only for the purposes of feeling good, because traditionally we have done this to feel good, but actually it's becoming good business. The biggest question I'm going to put to you, does your business have that social license to operate? Now, this is a big question. You might think and you might take it for granted but at the end of the day, what will matter for your business is whether it do have that social license to operate. Remember, for you to open doors in your organization, in your business, you must have that license from the city council. This is not what you are talking about. This is about the people who buy from you and we'll be able to see the statistics. You know, I think 63% of Kenyans are saying that come the year 2023, 2024, they'll only buy from sustainable companies. So the question is, is your company sustainable? And are you plugging in, you know, as far as that is concerned and able to benefit from that movement of sustainability, which is now with almost every generation. And when we go to supermarket, I tell people a very simple example. When you go to supermarket 10 years ago, Unfortunately, people wouldn't need what is the content of the product. They would just throw things into the shopping cart. Today, they want to see the makeup of that product. And by the way, sustainability is not rocket science. As I said before, many of your organization is only that you don't discover. It is only that you are not aware. But there are many things that indeed you are doing within your organization, which then become sustainable. And therefore, we are already in the mix of things. Now, why is it important for us? Number one is access to capital. I want to bring to your notice that this all conversation started with a conference in 2015 in Addis, which was about funding sustainable development globally. Now, from that conversation, many good things came out of it. And those things were about how can we make the private sector to be incentivized to be able to play the game of sustainability. One, of course, way is to throw money to them at a cheaper rate, at a faster rate, with additionality. And hopefully with that, we can be able to help those businesses to scale and get into the sustainability dimension. I must also tell you, there are specific funds which are looking for opportunities, opportunities which demonstrate clearly how sustainable they are. So for instance, it's about the water recycling, that if water is your biggest resource in your production process, for instance, then how well are you managing that resource? Are you recycling? You know, are you having efficient equipment and processes, which instead of using five liters to produce a unit of your product, you are using three liters to produce that unit. Then indeed you will have incentives and you'll be able to be funded by those organizations which are looking for investments around sustainability. And again, you know, as I was talking about my experiences, you know, this Danish International Investment Fund is a fund which specifically targets businesses which are sustainable, clearly to demonstrate that indeed there is an opportunity for you to access capital if you demonstrate that you are sustainable and sustainable from the three perspectives that we talked about. Remember, traditionally, we've been looking only at economic sustainability, but now we have, you know, the advantage of incorporating environment and incorporating the social issues into that conversation. Now, disclosure requirement. This is, again, another interesting thing, and I can be a prophet of doom here to tell you that, you know, sustainability have traditionally been a voluntary exercise. If you feel like doing it, you do it. For those who are proactive and who have understood the competitiveness it can bring to our businesses, have gone forward and have done it. A pretty good example is the bank which is supporting us. Of course, it is in the big rig, but there are also enterprises which are small and medium who are already embraced this without any 
co coercion, you know, from regulators, from customers, or even from government. The third point, why we should care about this, you know, is about the increased awareness. And I tell you, many, many quarters, many conversations cannot go without, for instance, the word climate change, cannot go without the word sustainability, and not sustainability from the longevity, because that's the problem. Sometimes we always think that sustainability is about economic dimension. As I defined it, it's from the three dimensions, and therefore this increased awareness is going to push us towards that journey of making sure that environment, social and governance related issues are well embedded within our business models. And if we do that, of course, value and what I call shared value will flow into our business. Of course, investor demands. And I, we talked about the investments which are chasing impact. Now we are seeing more and more funds saying, yes, we are an impact first fund and financial comes secondary. So basically, they can be able to give you cheaper money if you can be able to create more jobs, if you can be able to reduce emissions, if you can be able to conserve water, if you can be more energy efficient. And with this perspective, then you can be able to get more money. You can be able to get more business within your organization, of course. And the final one is about the business competitiveness. And I briefly talked about the five reasons why when you go home today, I mean, you leave this conference, you leave this webinar, why it should stick at the back of your mind and you should think about it, you know, embedding sustainability in your business. It's about those revenues. It's about cost management. It's about risk management. It's about reputation. It's also about that social license to operate. And I get into the details of that because I think this is the crux of the matter. This is what will make the difference. If there is anything you need to take from this session, is deriving competitive advantage as i have put it on this side because this is what will take you or will make your business to be more resilient but at the same time ensure that you have more money in your pocket ensure that you are created value to the stakeholders not only shareholder but to all stakeholders that are within your business let's define these revenues how can we be able to increase revenues because of sustainability let me just give you a very simple example. And it's an example, you know, with a lot of humility, I'm borrowing from a large organization, but I'll still very quickly come to small organization and show you a couple of ways, you know, or discuss a couple of ways that I have seen, you know, businesses within the small and medium enterprises space doing. Now, let's talk about Safari as an example. It's a big organization, yes, and a few years back, they realized that Kenyans had a social problem. That social problem was about, you know, about financial inclusivity, financial deepening. They came together with KCB through what we call the M-Pesa to deliver a product, a product that enables all of us. You know, we don't need to go to the branches. I'm told KCB 95% and above of the transactions are done through the mobile or at least outside the branches. Now, 10, 15 years ago, Safaricom came up with this product called M-Pesa. M-Pesa is a sustainability product. When you look at their profitability, 40% of that business is coming through M-Pesa. Let's talk about cost reduction. And I think this is the easiest one. A good example is where I was giving an example of water. So just imagine how much water or electricity you are using within your operations. Now, if you put the sustainability hat and you want to become more efficient in terms of resource utilization, eventually what it will mean, you become more energy efficient, you streamline your supply chain and logistics, and all these have the benefit of reducing your costs. One good example, which is never talked about, is if you become sustainable and more and more employees want to be to be associated with responsible companies they will stick in the organization so therefore mobility of staff will be significantly reduced and when that is reduced it becomes with the benefit of you don't incur you know training costs so much because you have to train new people and also it doesn't come with the recruitment cost and all these are benefits that our organization can be able to achieve through sustainability.